Photoshop, folks. One of the things in Photoshop that we all run into this program for, if we're photographers for sure, is color correction. All too often, uh, we get images to either work on or that we photographed that were in the shade or maybe some color is cast uh, during the uh, shoot that is affecting our subjects and so forth. So it's so important to be able to control the color in the image. And of course, you see this image here of the children. Uh, there's obviously uh, a color cast on them and they're very much in the, you know, affected by the shadows in this particular scene. So in the past, I've had a multi-stage uh, way to deal with that. Sometimes it was uh, better at its job than others. But let me just show you what I always considered to be the foolproof way of doing color correction. Let's get started with that. Okay, so if we had this image, uh, I usually always create a duplicate layer. So I'm just doing, gonna do a Control J. Uh, if we're on a Macintosh, that would be a Command J. So then there's three things that we need to, to isolate. What is the lightest or uh, the whitest point in the image that's not blown out, that is. We don't want something where the sun has uh, caused a reflection of bright light or areas where there just isn't any data at all. Uh, also, we want the darkest or the black point in the image. And then we want to find middle gray. So, you know, it's always better if we can go out and do a lot of shooting and we've got a white card uh, in there when we initially set up to shoot. But that's not always the easiest thing to do and sometimes uh, photography is very spontaneous. So let's just say we don't have a white card in this, which we don't, and we're going to proceed to find the black, white, and middle gray points. So let's start by going to Image, to Adjustments, and down to Threshold. Threshold will allow us to find specifically the black and white points in the image or the closest to black and white. So let's just, it doesn't matter what you do first, but we want to find the last remnants of white that still has a, a little bundle of data. Uh, right here, this strip is a pretty good place to go. We'll go towards maybe the more center of the image and hold down the shift key and that will allow us to put a target right here so we just click once with our mouse and it drops the target in so now we do go the opposite direction and we want the last remnants sorry about that of black so right in here is a pretty good cluster of black and you don't want you know very much of this stuff but right in here uh, shift click again that gives us our black point now we don't want to click OK we've got a 1 and a 2 target we just want to cancel this so we just want to lay those targets down so cancel that and if you bring up the um, curves uh, just go to image and adjustments and uh, there's the shortcut is control M and that brings up this dialog box now that the cool thing is uh, if you move your mouse outside of this panel you click and it starts the animation and what we want is that little ball to end up right here in the middle of that intersection that gives us middle gray so we just look for a place uh, that's a little bit darker. So somewhere right in here is going to give us our middle gray. So let's just enlarge that. And I'm holding down the uh, control or command key on a Mac, space bar, and I'm clicking and just dragging to make this a lot bigger. I'm just clicking a few times here. And you see the individual pixels are right here. So now when I drag, you're going to see we're getting darker, 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 too dark, 
move it over and come down here and right there gives us our middle gray so we just hold down the shift key click and there's our middle gray that's target number three so while we're here and we're zoomed in and can see that particular pixel we can go ahead and click on the middle eyedropper which is middle gray and click right on that little square you saw the dramatic color shift so I'm going to do a control zero to bring this back to its normal size you see we've already got a huge difference uh, on the skin tones of these youngsters so let's go ahead and zoom in on target two right here which is the black point that we found and we need to make sure we're getting exactly in the area that we sampled so we're going to click on the left eyedropper is our black point so we just click right on that now if we zoom back out control zero you see we've still made more of a difference but it's a little funky still yet so now we need the white point which is right over here target number one so we're going to click on the right side eyedropper which is the white point and just click right there and we'll click OK over here and control zero to get back to where we were so if we turn this eyeball off you see the dramatic difference and you can really see the color cast involved sometimes all you need to do is find middle gray sometimes all you need is the white point uh, and you can adjust your color successfully but I found that this method pretty much meets all of the criteria sometimes we still have to do a little fine-tuning so I, I usually will go up and bring up the use saturation adjustment and let me bring that over here where you can see it and I will just move it ever so slightly to see exactly what's affected uh, I can also obviously adjust the lights and darks and affect also the saturation if it's running a little high obviously we can also employ our uh, levels and really bump the the light and shadows here bring the shadows down a little bit builds more contrast so it's really your call on how much you go with these but again let's just close that window and we'll turn these off so you can see what it looked like originally so there we were that's what we started with and that's where we are now certainly got rid of the color cast all right I'm gonna throw this stuff away just put it in the trash can and show you a different way I think it's uh, a very cool method to use and I'm gonna go in real quick and throw these targets away and I can just do that by holding down control the control key or the command key and clicking on that and then just dragging it off of the image to leave those there would be cheating so I'm just getting rid of that all right so the new method we're just going to create a blank layer go down here by the trash can and right here is the new uh, layer new blank layer so you can tell it's blank by the checkerboard we're going to fill this with gray middle gray actually so we go up to image I'm sorry edit fill and we're going to fill this with 50 percent gray all right so we just click ok and i know that doesn't look too great but it gets even worse we're going to go here where the blend modes are which starts by saying normal we're going to go all the way down to where it says uh, see if I can move this so you can see it I'll move that up here uh, we're gonna go all the way down to difference and as you see it is definitely different all right and here we're actually going to look for the middle gray 
So what we're going to do is put this back real quick. Hopefully it'll let me. I'll move that down here. All right. So I'm going to click on one of the adjustments. If you don't see the, these adjustment panels, just go up to Window and down to Adjustments, and you'll see these. You can also go down here to where this little half moon uh, yin yang looking symbol is and click there and you see the same things. But I'm going to click right here is the uh, little panel for threshold similar to what we just used a while ago. We click that and notice it all went to solid black. All right, we're going to move this slider all the way to the left and start bringing it to the right. And what we want to see are some clumps of the black. Okay, so right in here is a black. Now, if you don't get your uh, little color picker, you know, looking thing, and when you hold down your shift key, if it doesn't drop a target, you need to press the letter I on your keyboard to turn on the eyedropper. Once the eyedropper is turned on, all you have to do is go over there, put your mouse on top of that group of black pixels and shift or you know, just shift click right in there and we're dropping one single target. And then we're just going to click the X to get rid of that. We're also going to click trash to get rid of that layer, that layer, and that layer and come back to right here. Because all we needed was to find where this one target needed to be. We're going to go into levels and work on it from there. Curves, I'm sorry. So if we go up here, here's our little curves adjustment. We click on that and we get this tiny little screen. So this is kind of hard to use on certain things. And this being one of those, unfortunately, I'm going to move this over just a little bit. Uh, Right now, all I have to do is click on the middle eyedropper, which is the middle gray, and I can click right on that dot, and you see our color balance is there. I just need to lift the lightness, brightness a little bit, and then turn that off, and you can see how far we came with just that simple little few steps that we did. Just needed the one target, uh, to fix that. Now let's say, let's just throw that away. And instead of using that right there, we can also use, if we go to image, we can, we can do it here to uh, go to levels and middle eyedropper right there on that same place. And then we can bump the middle slider to brighten it up. If we want a little more contrast in it, we bring this right slider up a little bit. So let's get that out of the way, and here's the way it. <laughs> sorry, here's the way it did look, and now that's the way it looks. So we've gotten rid of the color cast. You can still tell they're in the shade because you see the shadows on them, but the colors are really drab and shot right here, and the color on their face is a little yellow. And but once you make this change, it, the colors just really pop, and they're pretty little faces just come right out and look fantastic. So let's try that on some other images as well. Now something like this used to uh, really bother me when I would see it, but uh, this was something that you would get into more with uh, uh, photo restorations than you're going to with something you photograph today. But all of us, if, if people know that you know Photoshop, uh, or are working with Photoshop at all, we'll expect you to be able to do color corrections on things like this. Now, we don't want the white on the sides to be affecting this image as we adjust it, so we're just going to chop that off. I'm going to turn on my rectangular marquee tool and going to select just the image itself. And I'm going to go to Image, Crop. So now we just have the youngster. Blow it up just a little bit. Control plus, command plus on a Mac. Now, we're going to do the same thing 
we did on the other image. Now this is very low resolution. You can probably tell that if I blow this up, you can really tell uh, not much uh, cleanness or sharpness to this image at all. So here we go. We're gonna create a new blank layer. We're gonna go up to edit and we're gonna go to fill and we want that to be 50% gray. Click OK. Change this from normal. Let me move this out again. Change this from normal to difference. Let's move this back a little bit more. Then we're going to go up here. Got that in the way. And I want to turn on the threshold right here. And we bring the slider all the way over, then start coming back. We want that clump of black somewhere right in here. Looks pretty good right in here. So with the eyedropper selected, we go down here and shift click in one of these nice areas that are black. So shift click puts a number one target down. Press X to get rid of that. We're going to go ahead and trash uh, these things here because all we wanted was that target. So we're going to hit the trash can a couple of times here. And now we can go up here, get the um, levels adjustment, the middle eyedropper. Go right here where that target is. And I caution you, uh, you don't want to vary because this particular color that it's looking for may just be on one square. See the difference here? These little squares are the pixels that make up this image. And each one of these may be different around it. So it could drastically affect the color situation. So we click right on that number one. And then we can just turn that X, just click it. And let's put this back. Well, let's just leave it right there for a second. I'm going to do a Control or Command 0, not Command O, but the number 0. So now you see the way it looks. Okay, we've got some blue going on, but look at the comparison. We've brought a lot of color back into the image. So now let's go up here to the UN saturation. And we can look at blues and cyan and so forth. I'm just going to keep that on master for a minute and click right here, right here by the word master. And when I get out here in the image, I can actually go up here and sample. And I can drag those particular, that color group uh, left and right. And you see what's going on in my sliders. It's dropping the saturation a bit. I can go down here in the grass, do the same thing. And the grass seems to be okay. Now let's just look at where we're at. I'll turn those off. There's where we started. And now there's where we are. Skin tones look pretty good. And that's the main thing. There are other colors that you just can't do anything about because that information is really tainted or lost. But the skin tones are looking pretty good in this image. Now we can go into this use saturation panel and we can, you know, tweak the individual colors if we want to. Uh, the greens, we can just see what the greens are doing. This way the greens are turning blue. And this way they're becoming yellowish. We can take the saturation of the greens down and we can take the lightness and darkness of the greens. All right, so we can also look at the cyans. You see how it's affecting his outfit and the fence back here that just looks blue and really garish. So you can play with those individual colors, I think whoever uh, gets this as a color restoration is not going to be that unhappy 
uh, just seeing that baby's face come back. All right, we're going to move on uh, to another image. I really like seeing this particular image because it's typical. I mean, when we go out and photograph in the snow, a lot of people uh, just go by what the meter says. And as we all know, uh, the snow would normally be white, but this light up here is casting that wonderful amber uh, color throughout the snow. But it should be white, so we need to fix that. So we're going to do the same thing uh, that we did on the other images. And let me get my layers back here. So we're going to create a new blank layer right here. And we're going to fill it again with uh, middle gray. So we get a fill and make sure it's on 50% gray. And then we're going to go and move this out of the way right here on the threshold. What did I do? Got to go up here, change that blend mode, and we got to go up here so you can see it. Difference. Now then, the threshold. Again, we'll go all the way this way, come back until we see a nice clump of blue. I'm sorry, black. Got to move that levels out of there, taking up too much room. So we got the threshold back here hiding. We got too much. Let's go with this. Make sure the eyedropper selected. Hold the shift key and click somewhere in this area. That's the area we want to target. Close this and let's start throwing some things away. So trash this layer, all that stuff. And this is where we want to get to. So again, we go, I keep moving that in the way up here to levels and we want the middle eyedropper and we need to go find that target number one so let's zoom in there it is up here see the squares again those are the pixels so right here is the pixel in target one so we click right on that Let's close that. Control or Command Zero to get back out. And now look at our slow snow compared to the way it was. Okay, we're going to bring a use saturation panel up here. I'm going to click on this little thing right beside the master. Sample the snow. And I can just remove that tint to it and get it back to white snow. I think that's a fantastic uh, way to deal with this color casting. Sometimes you just can't do anything about casting with your camera. You know, no matter how much you try to adjust for it in camera, you still end up with a little bit of problem maybe in your end result. So here's the way to quickly and accurately get rid of those color casts. I find this to be amazing. So let's find another one. So I find this one really interesting. I mean, that's a lot of red. And I'm sure we're dealing with a sunset here that that's, uh, you know, you're getting some real red stuff coming up in the sunset and the sun's popping that back this way. And it looks like a color cast. It's really not a flattering picture this way. So what we're going to do is again we're going to create the let's just make this a little smaller don't need quite all that much room so a uh, new layer icon edit fill middle gray 50 percent gray sorry and then we want to click here on normal and go down to difference then we can go up here to the little threshold slider all the way to the left now let's bring it in till we get nice black somewhere all right we got 
plenty of black right down in here so make sure your eyedropper is selected and we're going to shift click down in here close this with this layer, layer selected we can either hit uh, backspace a couple of times or you can hit the trash can until all that's gone now we're going to and our targets right down here so let's let's just go ahead and I'm holding down the uh, control key or command key on a Mac and the space bar at the same time and left clicking so let's just keep going in there because that will let us zoom and zoom in exactly where we want it that way all right we want to do the little uh, levels here and we're going to select the middle eyedropper come right here pop that close this and control zero command zero on a mac and now you can see the sun is casting the light back uh, and the water looks good let's just flip those back and forth again if we want to further adjust the color we can to click on the uh, use saturation I'll click on this little thing by the master sample this and I can take it up and down if I don't want it to be so harsh wherever we want it that's where it'll go all right I think that's pretty amazing okay well we got another uh, person in snow country so to speak but uh, a very hard uh, blue has come in here. It's a color cast. You can even see the blue on his face and eyebrows. So we're going to fix it the same way we did those others. So let's just control zero to get that in here. New layer icon here. Create that new layer. File. Or sorry, <laughs> edit and fill. 50% gray, go to normal, change this blend mode to difference, and then we want to get the threshold adjustment. Just click there, and right there is the threshold. Bring that all the way over and start our slide to the right. Right there is a pretty good group of black. If we zoom in a little bit, we can hold down to make sure your eyedropper is selected hold down the shift key click drops us our target get rid of this go back here to layers and I just moved the layers up here by the adjustments so I can toggle back and forth uh, so that way we didn't lose sight of the blend modes so I'm gonna throw these away click the trash can a couple of times get rid of that stuff now I'm gonna bring up the levels so we go back to the adjustments and we're going to click on the middle eyedropper and come right in here let's let's zoom in and right there let's zoom out control zero got a little green going on that's okay as we've already seen we can fix that very quickly we'll go to use saturation click this little icon here sample this green take that to the left and now we can see the brown of the jacket coming back in how about them apples here's some okay if the green's getting a little wicked back here uh, you can adjust it a little bit too uh, skin tone click it It's looking pretty good um, so we can you know have all kinds of adjustments going on here we can take that down a little bit more so it's not so harsh so let's look at the before and the after all right okay I've got this one and one other I believe um, I feel like if we do this together several times, it will stick better than just seeing me do it one time and then you replicating it. I think different colors 
also help you to see what's going on. So obviously right here we have a lot of yellow going on. So we're going to click on the new layer icon and we're going to go up to edit, down to fill, 50% gray, and then we're going to go and change the blend mode from normal to difference. And then we're going to go over here to adjustments and we're going to click on the threshold all the way to the left and then come back over. Looks like up here we've got pretty good cast going on. I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in coming down here where the kids are um, but it, it's gathering a lot of black up here at the top so let's maybe we'll try both places I'm gonna drop a target right here make sure the eyedropper is selected and click here and I'm gonna go um, down here I'm gonna control and command on a Mac hold down my space bar and I'm gonna zoom in and I'm going to drop a target here too. So shift click here. That gives us number two target. Uh, control minus to zoom out a little. I'm going to drop a target here. And I'll show you why. All right. Getting rid of this. And I'm going to go to layers and get rid of this stuff. Just hitting the trash can. Now you see we got a target number two here. Uh, where else have we got a target? Back here on the stove, there's number one. Somewhere else in here, there's a target hiding. And I'm not seeing it right now. But we're going to click on adjustment and the levels. And we're going to go up here to the one that there's, I think, a, yeah, there's number two. And we're going to go up here to the stove where we saw that uh, first target. And I'm using the space bar. Just clicking on there when I hold down my space bar, I can click and just kind of punch it to get it to slide around. All right. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. We're starting to see the pixels in there. And I'm going to shoot that with my middle eyedropper. And let's zoom out. Control zero makes it easier. Or command zero. And you see we've got some garish uh, yellow on the tabletop. We've eliminated some of it up here. Uh, you know, so-so, right? So uh, what we can do is hit the little trash can here and just get rid of that. And let's say we want to do it again. We'll click on the levels adjustment again. And let's try the second target. So I'll go down here where target 2 is. And you see these pixels. All right, middle eyedropper right here. Control or Command Zero. Really pretty similar colors going on. But let's just do this time, let's do a Control Z. That'll get us right back to where we were before we clicked on that. And we'll go over here to number three. So I'm holding down my Control key or Command on a Mac, my space bar, and just clicking and dragging my mouse. I click once and drag. Okay, so let's click right on that. Wow, that made a big change, but is it better? Control zero. No, this went bluish on us. All right, so let's go back and click right back here, and we're going to do some adjusting. All right, so with the layers uh, selected, let's just kind of fine tune that. The gingerbread house probably isn't green, right? So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to go back over here to adjustments, go to use saturation. I'm going to click on this green once I click that 
pointing figure there. Click and I'm going to drag it. See what we get. All right, let's let's control Z that and let's just change this slider a bit. Now, see we're on we should be on master. Now let's try the slider here. We want to get the garishness down and get get the brown back in that wood. Now I don't know that we can completely kill that. That looks a lot better, doesn't it? Let's go to the skin tones. Back to master. And let's see here. Skin tones on him look pretty good. His camo doesn't look bad. Try to get some of that pinkishness out of there. There we go. So let's look at the before and after. There's where we were. And there's where we are now. So one of the main things we want to try to fix when there's people involved is the skin tone. So those kids are, you know, recognizable and they look good, so forth. Okay, gang, we're going to work on this final image in the color correction uh, group. And you should be getting this kind of down pat by now. You've gone through those steps several times if you followed along, and I hope you have. Uh, you can see that the creator of this uh, color correction gave us a before and after, which is cool because it kind of gives us a target to work for. Because in the after, they did a really nice job. So let's try to do as good a job on our end. Okay, we can't really do a good color correction, in my opinion, on this unless we isolate it. So we need to just make a copy of just this side. So just let's just go up here, click on the rectangular marquee tool, and then just do a selection of just it. Then we'll do a edit crop. Now, there is a crop tool over here that's more confining. Uh, right now we're just trying to make a copy of something and we're not really... Uh, trying to change resolution and copy like for an 8 by 10 and so forth. So we can just do an image crop, which is a little different. That's okay. Now we need to save this file, save as, and I've already done that. Here it is. So we can, uh, you can name it whatever you want to and just do a save. And then once you've saved that, all you have to do is go into your history and let's just go down to my history and go back one. And you've got both images up. Do a control D to turn off these uh, marching ants. And then open up your other image that has the other, the single shot, which is that one right there. So now we have those and this, this and those or something. All right, so let's work on this one, and we'll use this to compare our success. Okay, now we'll close this uh, history for now, and we'll just get, let me move that down out of our way. Uh, I don't want this up here. Get rid of that for now. And anyway, we just want this. Okay, so now we're going to do the same steps that we did before. So new layer icon creates the blank layer. Go to uh, edit and down to fill. Fill with 50% gray. If that's not open, you go down to it. Click OK. We're going to change the blend mode from normal to what? Difference. Right. So with difference selected, we want to go to adjustments, and if adjustments isn't open, remember adjustments, let's just bring that out here and close it. We don't have adjustments out here, we'll say. Go to window, adjustments, 
and then you can bring it over here and put it wherever you want in the tabs or just leave it by itself. But now we need a threshold, which is right here. One, two, three from the right on the bottom. All right, drag the slider all the way to the left and start bringing it back over. We want some places where we got the black. Remember, uh, this is the area we're selecting from. Not too many black places. Don't try to get too much. Uh, something like that's okay. I want to get some clumps. So we're going to sample from several different places because the grays or the black area is so coming through so fast down here. So we're going to drag it a little bit further. Well, if you noticed, I got it set pretty much the way I want. But if you notice that there are targets already there, you really need to get rid of those because you don't want the old targets. And there could be some lingering. So if you want to get rid of those, which we do, uh, hold down the control key on a, Mac, on a PC and command key on a Mac, and they'll just click right on it, and it turns onto this little target move thing. And then you can just move it right off into outer space, so to speak. Just get it right off there. Okay, we're going to set new targets, and I like this part came in quickly, so I'm going to target down here. I'm going to target this, this. So I'm just shift-clicking on all these places, and I'm going to try even up here. And then I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to go over to my uh, layers and start getting rid of stuff. Just Yes, I don't want that. I don't know what this talking about. Let's just hit this and it's not want to get rid of it. I'm just going to hit the backspace on all those. You see the targets are there. Sometimes Photoshop gets a little odd. That's okay. We didn't end up, end up with our targets up there. I guess that's what it was asking me about. We weren't on quite the right thing. So I'm going to go back in my history and Let's just get those samples back again. We'll add that one up here and that one over here. And now, get rid of that. And I'm just going to click on that layer and hit backspace and get rid of those things. And I've got my sample targets and that's fine, oh dandy. I actually wanted to put one up here, uh, but we're gonna sample from there anyway because that was a black space too. Okay, so this time I'm going to do things a little bit different. I'm going to go, instead of using the um, levels right here, I'm going to go to Image and Adjustments and Levels, or Control-M will bring them up as well. And I'm going to click right on the uh, middle slider, and I can just start anywhere I want to. But the reason I'm going to bring this up, if I, if I did the following... Uh, with that tiny little one, every time I did one, it would basically go away, and that's hard to explain. Uh, but this menu will stay up, and we can undo stuff and just take a look at it, basically. Uh, so I'm going to try this number one down here. Just click in that area, and you see what happened. And mm -mm, I don't know. We can either hold down the Alt or Option key and click on Reset, or we can just do a control Z. Let's try number five up here. Oops, middle middle eyedropper. Okay, not crazy about it. Control Z. I'm gonna click right over here where the hair was because I know this is a black area and I forgot to tag it. Not crazy about that either. Let's try the number four. No. Control Z. Number three. No. Number six, not bad. Remember, the main thing is we're trying to kill that color cast, remember? Mm, that made green. That's not bad. I'm going to go with that one. So it killed that yellow pretty good. All right, I'm going to click OK. So now in our layers, we're going to add an adjustment. We got rid of some stuff, right? We got rid of uh, the color cast we see there. 
but we need to fine tune this a little bit more. So we go to the adjustment layers and get the use saturation. Now what we can do is right here, the little finger again, click it and we can go in here and click on this, get the skin tones and be able to adjust that. We can click on the background and we can change that a bit too. But let's start off by, I'm just going to trash that real quick. Let's just start this again with the, make sure that didn't have a layer adjustment on it. We're going to go with the master right now and just see what we can do. Just moving it around a little bit like so. And let's see what taking the saturation down a little bit will do for us and changing the light a little bit. Now let's click on the finger and look at her hair. We'll sample it. Sample it down here. Let's go and see what we can do. Whoops, switch back again. I need to adjust the yellows right in here. Just more than anything, looking at her hair. And let's go to reds again. All right, let's go down here and click. So let's go over and look at the the one that they did. And let's do something different so we can compare this to at the same time. Let's go to window arrange tile vertically and now we can see these together let me hold down the uh, space bar and then I can shove this over here a little bit so we need to build the contrast a little bit in this one right so uh, levels adjustment here let's bring that in this in and then we can move the middle slider to kind of fine-tune that now let's go to the reds. We don't really want to create another cast. But I think as we look at this one, the reds may be a little overdone in this image. And her face is a little bit too red as well. But that's okay. We'll, we'll adjust ours and we'll bring these sliders in because there's no data in, in there in either one of these. Let's go to red again here. Let's see if this helps us or hurts us. All right, back up to the RGB. You can tone that back down again. Let's go to blue and see if we can't Move that a little bit further back. All right, I think we've made the thing a lot more pure than what this one is. But if we want to fix her hair to where it's more red or the skin or whatever, we can certainly do that. I'm going to bring the uh, layers out here again. Just put it over that for a second. I'm going to create a new uh, adjustment use saturation layer. And what I'm going to do is really kind of pump up some color. So I'm going to make her hair more reddish like they had it here and I don't want to affect things overall too much let's see what we got we pump that up a little bit more and then we can paint if you remember we're painting on a mask we're gonna paint with black right on the face going to tone that down a little 
So see, we brought the hair back up quite a bit like that one. We can make adjustments like that to anything, including the background. If we want to make the background lighter, no problem. We can create a new adjustment layer and bring the light up. And we'll say that's fine old dandy. And what we're going to do, again, the layers went where? Layers went away. And here's this one, and we've got um, white everywhere, including on her. So we're going to get rid of some of that white that's right on her. That's a hard brush. I right click to get that up and we'll just paint her. Get her hair painted a little bit. Make the brush a little bit bigger so we can go a little faster. So we made that changes to the background and whitened it up a little bit. So we can control all kinds of things in the image. It just depends on how far we want to go with it, how fast. Okay, and if just to explain to you real quick, these tags will not show if you save this or print it, they go away. Now, just so you know, painting with layers, we're going to get into more later on, but I wanted you to be able to see that we could, you know, make it look a whole lot more like what they had by simply uh, brightening up the background on its own new saturation layer. Uh, we also punch the hair color up with that one new saturation. So we can make all kinds of changes and it's all gonna end up better than just having a horrible uh, color cast in an image like some of these things that we can end up with. All right, hopefully that helps you out and doesn't confuse you. But I think overall, you see, we can make those major color corrections uh, with that new, connect, uh, <laughs> new technique and uh, can simplify our life. This one was a lot more complicated because we we're trying to get to that target image uh, that had already been done for us. So, gang, practice, practice, practice. That's the main thing in Photoshop. Don't pull your hair. Just pull your desk up and practice. All right. Talk to you all later. Have a great one. Bye-bye.